The Rockies franchise has returned today. Welcome to episode 96. We're here in the 2025 season with Rafael Devers leading the team, playing at an MVP caliber level early in the season. We are currently 18 and six, the best start we've ever had in this series by far. And we're getting into the month of May. I want to do a bit more simulating now in the episodes and we open with a four game series against the Dodgers where we take the first two games from them and have a chance to already clinch this series. We go into game three, ninth inning, we lead by one, two down, it's Cody Bellinger facing Sir Anthony Dominguez, who I don't think has been as sharp as he was a year ago, but he's still been a reliable closer. There's strike two against Cody. It's a one-two count. That misses low and the count is evened up. In the air to left field. Over a few steps. And this game is over. The Rockies take the first three from the LA Dodgers. Something we haven't been able to do in this series. But I think the pitching changes are starting to close that gap between us that has been pretty prevalent previously in the series. Jake DeGrom picks up his sixth victory of the season. He's still dealing with a lot of walks, but he's still so good. Now, Corbin Burns gets hurt in the next day. This is a minor elbow injury, but he's probably going to miss a start or two and we complete the sweep of LA in Colorado. I'd have to go back, but it feels like this might be the first sweep of the Dodgers in this series. And it improves our record to 22 and six. You have to do so many things right to have a winning percentage like that. With us settling into the season now, I did want to talk a little bit about what's happening down in the minor leagues. We talked about Michael Moreno last episode and the AAA team. Well, down at AA, we have Mickey Littlefield, who opened his year with an eight-inning victory, allowing only one hit and striking out nine. Later in the video, we're going to go through a start with him. Back to the majors now. Coming off of our sweep against the Dodgers, maybe we're starting to buy into the hype a little bit because we get swept by the New York Mets. And this road trip doesn't start out well for us. Not like the last one where we had a couple of sweeps. We lose five games in a row. And you're going to have this happen here. It's baseball. You're going to have winning streaks and losing streaks. Well, this is the first big losing streak of the year. The timing of it, you know, feels a little weird. But it never feels right for a team to go and lose all these games when they start 22-6. and six. So... We didn't pitch as well in these games, and I wanted to get into the action and hopefully end this streak and try to get back to winning. You want to end these losing streaks as quickly as you can. So let's go into the final matchup here against the Philadelphia Phillies, who would love to turn around their start to the year by sweeping the top team right now in the National League. On the mound today, it's going to be Matthew Boyd, the lefty for the Phillies. He has a 5.81 ERA, giving up a 1.52 whip and walking more batters than he is striking out. Not ideal. We have Yanni Chirinos taking the mound for the Rockies in this game. And David Geronimo will get us started. Let's go top one. Two down, Geronimo hitting just over 200. A bit of a slow start for him as he waves at the curveball and... It's a 2-2 count. Got him with the curveball running inside. Geronimo chases. It's an eight-pitch first inning for Matthew Boyd. That'll bring us to Yanni Chirinos, who hasn't done anything too surprising this year. He doesn't rack up a lot of strikeouts, but he'll get some and a lot of weekly hit outs. Some ground balls, weak pop-ups. That's when you know he's having a good day. Alec Bohm waves and misses as he falls behind. One, two. And there's the slider away. Perfect placement for Yanni Chirinos. When his command is on point, that's when he tends to get his strikeouts. And Harper lines out to end the inning. It's a quick first here. No offense. So let's go to the guy who has provided the most of it this year. It's Rafael Devers. 15 home runs? He's averaging a home run pretty much every other game. 
No surprise here. Boyd not attacking the strike zone here. Early in the at bat, but you got to be careful leaving the curveball up there. 3 1. He did it again. Devers out in front. Count goes full. And that's in the air. Rafi gets a bit underneath it. And it's an easy fly out to center field. Here's Ty France, one away. Another breaking ball. This one's down the line. It'll kick over into left field, and France will be aboard with a single. And, of course, with Boyd the lefty playing, Johnny Schaefer makes the start facing another lefty, and he cannot locate that curveball right now. They are all up. Okay, that one's down, and Schaefer strikes out. But to be fair, we hadn't seen him actually locate it well. It was kind of confusing. Strike three. Let's go bottom two with former Rocky David Dahl at the plate. And he goes around, chasing the splitter. That could be a pretty successful pitch for Chirinos. JT Realmuto in the air to center field. And there's a 1-2-3 second inning. You know I like having realistic series here. I can make it really realistic and save this Mother's Day game for tomorrow, but it's been a while since the last episode, so it's going up today. Two down here in the fourth inning. Rafael Devers up again, and he's going to left center. Better carry on this one, but same result. He flies out. We cruise through these early innings, not seeing a lot of base runners reach. So we go bottom four, Chirinos only 37 pitches into his day as this is chopped to third. A little trouble with it initially, but France recovers one down. Brings up Alec Bohm and the splitter gets him to chase. That's the best chase pitch I think Chirinos has. And then he paints the outside edge, strike three. Two down, that brings up Bryce Harper. And this one is crushed. Out to deep right, and we have the first run of the ball game. A high fastball that Harper turns on. It's a solo shot for number seven on the season. And just probably not a good idea to try and get a strike up there. Finally, some offense here in game three. The Phillies lead, and we'll take this into the fifth inning. Ty France. He leads off after hitting a sharp single earlier in the second. And there's a drive out to left center. And this game is tied once again. Number three for Ty France, who hasn't started the year hitting with the same power he did a year ago. But it's there somewhere. And I think that he could easily get hot for a month and potentially carry the offense. He showed that ability a year ago staying in the fifth now one down Schaefer with the drive good carry out to left what a catch on the warning track but that's the contact we want to see from Johnny this is all part of his evolution as a player bottom five into center field hit sharply and Reynolds gets back to make the catch 62 pitches now for Chirinos strike one low Fouled off the splitter. Now whatever you want. Strike three. Another splitter. That is a fun pitch. Still tied up heading into the sixth inning. Trey Turner haven't talked about him today. Having a decent start to the year though. That misses inside. 3-0 and for Matthew Boyd. Pitch count starting to get up there. And there's a drive into center field. And it's going to be caught. We've seen some good contact, but not always able to find any open space. As Geronimo's underneath one, as Boyd missed again. This is out to left center, and it's gone! It just kept carrying. Off the bat, I wasn't sold at all. But David Geronimo cranks out number five to give the Rockies a sixth inning lead. Alec Bohm, line to left field, landing in front of Geronimo. He's going to reach. And now you have Harper to deal with. Strike one, fastball taken low and away. 321 average for Harper. There goes Bohm, that's crushed to right center field. Not going to get there in time, and this will tie the game up at two. RBI double for Bryce Harper. 
Trying to limit the Phillies to just the two runs. Here is Reese Hoskins, and that misses away. 2-2 count again outside. Payoff pitch way inside. Chirinos walks Hoskins. And that'll bring up David Dahl. Chirinos trying to close out one more inning. 80 pitches into the day now. And this one's turned on. David Dahl out to right field. He daggers his former team. A three-run blast, and the Phillies open the game up. It's 5-2. Gotta love the revenge game scenarios here when they're in play. I can't ignore them. I just like the narrative, but for us to lose five in a row and then see Dahl crush this one, it ain't easy. Chirinos was having a good day. Made a couple mistakes against Bryce Harper, but then David Dahl with the biggest swing of the day. 5-2 as we go to the seventh. And France goes deep to left field. If it's fair, it's gone. Off the foul pole. He's got his second. He came in with two. He's leaving with two more. And Matthew Boyd is still staying in the game. Line drive. Almost drilled him. It's a base hit for Brandon Nimmo. That's it for Matthew Boyd. As Zach Wheeler apparently comes out of the bullpen now. Don't know when that started to happen. Johnny Schaefer facing a righty. He's staying in the game. Another drive out to left center field. And Schaefer has tied this game. The 5-2 deficit erased in a hurry. With no outs here in the seventh inning. A pair of home runs including Johnny Schaefer. Showing he's made improvements hitting against right-handed pitchers. And not just any right-handed pitcher, a very quality one in Zach Wheeler. He's swinging the bat really well. This is the best the Rockies have swung the bat on this losing streak. And they're not done! Base hit and maybe more. That is Solak to the wall. And he's going to sprint into second base. There is still nobody down in the seventh inning. And Josh Bell is coming off the bench. 2-0. Missing outside. Good take. 3-0. Ball four. What's happening to the Phillies pitching all of a sudden? This was a pitcher's duel for a little while. The game has changed. Turner. Knocked down. Do you try to get him at first? No, they try to go to second and in safely is Ryan Valade, who is pinch running for Bell. And the bases are loaded for Reynolds. Ground ball, got to that third, there's a tag. And a late throw to first. Awkward play there. We get a run though. The Rockies lead, it's a four run seventh inning. Here's David Geronimo. Popped it up. And that's going to be the second out of the inning. Long run there for the shortstop. And now we get Rafael Devers. Two on and two down. Devers with the drive. Out to right field. And he's done it once again. Rafael Devers, number 16. And he's broken this game wide open. What a seventh inning for Colorado. Nine to five out of nowhere. Seven runs. Three home runs. And they did most of this damage with nobody out. I love baseball, man. You think a game is going one way for most of the day. It's a pitcher's duel. We have a quick game here. Not anymore. Lucas Sims is coming in now to protect a four-run lead. We're bottom seven, and that's a ground ball to third base. France gathers and airmails the throw into the camera well. Just getting away from him entirely. Pitch in the dirt, gets away from Johnny Schaefer. He gathers and gets the runner at third base. He and Dom are so good at that. Got him out in front with the slider strike three. I really like Lucas Sims. I think he's had a great season. But that's down the line. It's a fair ball. Perfect bounce. And it's just a base hit. Now Bryce Harper. 
We don't want to miss this time. That's low. And trying to get to second. There will be no throw. Three and two. We'll walk Harper. It's way better than what he's done in the previous trips. But now two on for Hoskins. And that misses, apparently. Three and oh. All right, this is trouble. Lucas Sims has loaded the bases. Tying run now at the plate for Philadelphia. And it's David Dahl who hit the big three-run homer earlier in the game. And we're going to make a pitching change. It's time for Taylor Rogers to come in. He's been really, really good in this setup role. Lefty-lefty matchup. He misses outside with the slider. 1-0. and oh. Fouled off the sinker. Not exactly where you want it to end up. There's a better curveball. And now he's ahead. 1-2. and two. Dahl checked his swing. He did not go. Count is even. Chopper over Rogers. He spins and makes the throw to first base and gets out of the jam. Things almost got really interesting. So let's go bottom eight. Rogers staying in the game. This is Real Muto, and he's jammed going inside for that one. France makes the play. 3 2 now with one down. Strike three. Big slider away from Taylor Rogers. Let's go bottom nine. Not a save situation. Scott Oberg is in. One, two counts. Oberg, strike three. Good slider away. Philadelphia down to their final out. It's boom. And we have liftoff. Way out of here. No doubt about it. It's a three-run game. Bryce Harper hoping to extend it. 2-0. Ground ball. Won't beat the shift. France makes the play and the losing streak comes to an end after five games. An exciting Rockies win. The bats eventually wake up. And we have to get some critical outs down the stretch to preserve this lead and win it. Very fun game though. Kind of a tale of two games there. You have to be impressed with Johnny Schaefer so far, what he has shown against right-handed pitching. And if Dom Nunez wasn't playing at such a high level, Schaefer would be playing every day. But I think Dom brings an incredible amount of value still to the team. So we end up basically going 5-5 five and five this episode just in a weird way with a sweep of the Dodgers and then losing five in a row before ending it. But I wanted to end this episode... Talking about Mickey Littlefield, as we have pretty much every season. Comment section always loves these Mickey Littlefield games, so we've returned once again. Littlefield had an outstanding opener to the season. Again, eight innings, nine strikeouts, only allowing the one run. If those strikeouts start to come up a little bit, it's going to be a really interesting year for Littlefield because that's never been the strength of his game and his K per nine is still at 43. So that might have been a little fluky as this one runs inside. His control is a bit all over the place at times. That one really got away from him. But this is typically where Littlefield is at his best. Change up low, get the quick ground outs. Littlefield is a 67 overall right now at 22 years old. And has 87 potential. Now, if you look at the individual pitching ratings for him, his fastball that can get up there in the high 90s has 97 break. Has some movement on it, but only 53 control. His slider, he has 80 control of, but only 35 break. So it just doesn't slide quite as much as you would like. Nice defense here. The changeup interesting here has zero velo 35 control 18 break another fantastic play over at third base couldn't get the out they've been fun to watch in this one and then you got the 12-6 curveball that i like to throw a lot with him that has 41 control 30 break so he's obviously still developing kind of the swing and miss part of the pitching like the break and control combination isn't really there and if you're wanting strikeouts with him right now, it's probably just best to try and overpower with the fastball. 
at least that does have some movement and can reach triple digits as it did there. Littlefield here picks up the strikeout. There's the chase low. But obviously Littlefield still down at double A. Just wanted to see him really dominate at this level before being called up. And especially to maybe start striking out more of these double A hitters. Just think it'll make his development go a little more smoothly. There's a jam grounder up the middle. And that's going to end the inning. So overall in this game here, start number two, there aren't like a lot of strikeouts for Littlefield. I think I'm still learning too how to like pitch with him. You have to dive into the pitching ratings to really figure it out. And I do think that I probably just have to throw a lot more fastballs. But there, he did go around. That is strike three. And Littlefield goes six this time, only allowing the one run. So if we check out the pitching breakdown, we did throw a lot of fastballs with him. Only three hits allowed, and two of those were good locations. And then for the swing and miss stuff, that's become something I'm looking at a lot. Only seven whiffs in this game. Only one of those was actually in the strike zone. So he's got a long way to go, obviously, with his stuff. But the potential is on display, and he's not giving up a ton of hard contact. Nice start to the year for Mickey. We're going to obviously be checking in on him to see how he's developing. Already has uh, plus one to his hit per nine, so that's good to see. You don't normally see any movement here two starts in. Now, I am wrapping the episode up, but don't leave quite yet. I need you to watch to the end today. This was, you know, a routine episode overall. I wanted to sim one more game. And that is when we see Rafael Devers has suffered a pretty serious injury, a broken shin, and he is going to miss up to two months of the season. During one of the best individual seasons I think any of my series have had in a long time, at least the way this season has started, Rafael Devers is now going to miss a large portion of the season. It's been so much fun to watch him carry the team and play at an MVP level and to have us in first place right now. 34 games in, he has 16 homers. I think he's only had like one off day. He's on pace for a 70 plus home run season. I don't think that would necessarily stay that way, but certainly now missing up to two months is going to hurt. And we're going to now see what this team looks like without Devers. And remember, it's a contract season. So we're going to know what this team looks like without him now going forward. So we need to remember, at this moment, we're 23 and 12. And now Josh Bell is going to become an everyday player. And I signed him for a situation like this. I wanted better depth at that corner infield spot. Or uh, I think it's just first and right he can play. But the plan is to play him at first base and basically take over for Rafael Devers, who will probably be coming back, if I had to guess, that would be at the All-Star break two months from now. Do I put him on the 60-day injured list to open up that roster spot or just keep using 10 days to see if he could come back earlier? Let me know what you think. I haven't had situations like this come up too often but now we got to show that we can manage without our mvp and we'll see how it goes starting next episode thank you all for watching today's video i know it's a really tough way to end it but that's sports and he'll be back later in the season please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and the rockies will be back again soon as we move forward without rafael devers for a little while have a great day.